northeast. Let's give him a huge, huge round of applause to start off this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, and dear guests and students, Padma Panipura. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening to you all. We uh, are in Guwahati, and I thank the organizers, and I'm delighted. It's uh, a pride uh, for me and also a great pleasure uh, to be in this evening. Uh, is India, as we all know, that uh, comprises of uh, seven sisters and uh, Himalayan state of uh, Sikkim uh, shares about 98% uh, of its borders with other countries. Uh, the reason topographically the mixture of hills and plains is uh, one of the rich uh, biodiversity hotspots in the country and uh, rich in exotic flora and fauna, uh, rich in natural resources, uh, is, is having high concentration of uh, tribal population, having distinct uh, cultures, uh, art, the custom rituals, and uh, one of the diverse cities uh, in the entire country. And uh, what we have seen in the last uh, one decade, well, it's more than that, uh, many discussions and initiatives have taken place to, to make notice as a gateway to Southeast Asian countries, ASEAN countries. And uh, the borders, they are seen as uh, opportunities, gateway of opportunities for trade, commerce, economic engagement, diplomacy, not uh, as uh, barriers. So the theme of today's event, that uh, no more boundaries, has a lot of significance. And what I'm going to speak today is uh, basically on the national connectivities that Northeastern region has with the communities of Southeast Asia. And it's entirely based on my research uh, as student of Jawaharlal Nehru University almost 12 years back. I made uh, studies, expansive studies on this area and discovered that uh, we have many similarities, national ties with Southeast Asia and uh, East Asian countries. And I visualize Northeast India as, as a factor eradicating borders and boundaries uh, between India and Southeast Asia. The boundaries that I'm referring here, I'm talking about uh, is both physical and emotional boundaries. Uh, physical infrastructure can connect two regions physically, but uh, the emotional boundary, that is the cultural boundaries, can connect people by heart and mind. And what is missing in most of the uh, research and policy decisions that what we see that uh, policymakers and uh, scholars they emphasize more on facts, studies, uh, empirical studies, and uh, theories, and uh, often leave out this important element of uh, any relationship that is bonded with love and affection. So, as I uh, already said, that we have natural connectivity in Southeast Asia. In terms of uh, you know uh, ethnicity, language, custom, rituals, our traditions. For example, if you see the Thai homes, one of the very dominant uh, you know ethnic group in Northeast India, has its origin in the Thai race of Southeast Asia. This South, this this Thai race is found many places of Southeast Asia like Myanmar, Thailand, uh, Vietnam, and Laos. It is known as Shan in Myanmar and Thai in Thailand, Lao in uh, uh, Laos, and Te in Vietnam. And similarly, if you see the Maite community in uh, Manipur, also has origin in Thai days of Southeast Asia. Again, again, we have similarities in Mizoram also. The Mizos and, uh, and the Cookies, they have origin in, in China, the Singlong community. Uh, that is found in China as the origin of this, uh, this community. Hazis of Meghalaya, uh, one of the few matrilineal communities uh, in India, uh, migrated from Yunnan and still having a presence in uh, Vietnam, that is uh, in Red River Delta. So uh, we have similarities in terms of uh, uh, you know, ethnicity. Again, we have uh, similarities in terms of languages. The Thai homes languages of the homes and uh, Maiden, Manipuri, or Lusai, and Mizoram. They, they belong to the same 
this Sino Tibet Thai, Sino, Sino Thai group of languages that is widely spoken in Southeast Asian countries of Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, and uh, Vietnam. And you see that uh, in Upper Assam, a community called Sinfos. They are belong to the Thai race and speak, still speak in the Thai balance dance and Thai dance form in, in the cultures. Almost in the similar time, that is the month of April. See, a Paima is the Laosian New Year and it has the customs of throwing waters on each other and uh, it also includes components of dance, Sing of songs or you know cleansing of uh, statues and images of Lord Buddha, and similar traditions are followed in uh, some grand festival of Thailand and Sankan of uh, Runasal Pradesh. In Bengali Bihu and Bihu, I, I would say the Bihu, we have the components of uh, dance and sing of Bihu songs. All these festivals are celebrated to promote brotherhood and unity among their communities. Again, if you see, uh, you know, in terms of our customs, that uh, the Madam Mephi, that's one of the uh, ritual customs of uh, our homes, that is the ancestral worship, is also has a presence in Southeast Asia. And uh, the, the keeping of flying dragons by homes in the scriptures also we found in Thai communities of Thailand. Uh, if you see the food habits and dress style or other rituals of uh, various communities of Northeast India, we find many similarities with the communities of Southeast Asia. Say, for uh, we uh, find among the homes and missing in the Assam, uh, these are uh, houses made of uh, wood and bamboos. Uh, it's also so you know we have national connectivities. We, we are necessarily connected to Southeast Asia. So what we need to do, that we have to uh, initiate more and more people to people contact uh, between these two reasons. And one of the most important uh, you know, landmark of uh, in, uh, Guwahati, and uh, more than 250 participants drove from Myanmar, Thailand, uh, uh, you know, Laos, Vietnam, Malaysia and Indonesia. This uh, cardinal reorganizing in 2012. So we need to have more and more such uh, activities and to have more engagement, whether this engagement in terms of economy or diplomacy or uh, cultural field, we need to have such activities first. And uh, the first and foremost thing is to exploit the natural ties we have. And for that, I feel we need to put innovation and technology on already existing the aspects of natural ties. Say for the handlooms and handicrafts, we have similarities in Southeast Asia. If we put technology and innovation into these aspects of natural ties, we'll get a new market for the Northeast region, and the people from Northeast will get benefit. And another thing that I feel that we need to promote entertainment through, you know, cultural exchanges. These two elements, this putting of technology and innovation in already existing uh, elements of natural ties and the promotion of entertainment through cultural exchanges would create a model, a design for cooperation. And this model, in this model, any further engagement with uh, Southeast Asia, the beautiful region of ACFS would be easier, whether it's in economy, or trade, or commerce, or diplomacy. And that's how, that's how I see that in connecting Northeast India beyond its border. Thank you very much. The relevant on multi-ethnicity and polycultural milieu that we are all surrounded by.